friends, well, this is not my normal type of video. I decided to use my knowledge and love of decorating to have a little bit of Halloween fun. You see, the storm was raging outside and I found a lot to do in my dining room. I transformed it into a witch's lair. I used a lot of the things that I have around the house to tell a really wonderful story about a delightful witch named Wanda. I hope you enjoy this video and find a lot of inspiration in it and just have some fun. Hi everyone, Annette here from Ask Me Decor. Welcome back, and if you're new here, thanks for joining me, I really appreciate it. So I thought it was high time we had a little fun around here. It's Halloween next, like two more weekends, but this past weekend was like torrential rain here where I live. There was nothing better to do than to get a little crazy in the house. Wait till I show you what I did to my dining room. All right, so you're getting a glimpse of it now. I decided to make my dining room look like a witch's lair for Halloween. Most of the things in this room I already had. So I'm going to take you around the room and show you everything I did, all the details. And then I really wish you'd stick around for the end of the video this time because there's a great surprise coming up and it has to do with everything we did to this room. First thing I did was take the chairs out of the room, except for one. I left one of them behind and I moved the table. We took the leaf out of the table and I moved the table so that it would be on an angle. I put my wing back chair in here and I wanted to kind of make that look like a desk area. Then I brought in this trunk. Now this trunk I actually got on the side of the road. There was a house down, down the road a ways. They were moving and they had a yard sale and then after the yard sale, everything that didn't sell, they just put out for the garbage man. And I was driving past, saw this truck and thought, I think I could do something with that. So look at how great it looks in a witcher's lair. I put an, a lantern on top of it. I put these Halloween witch's boots on the, like in front of it. I made these last year. You can go back and watch that video, but these were, you know, very fancy boots that I know I'm never going to wear. So I got some spiders and some rivets and some, uh, just some twine and I made them look like witch's boots. Don't they look great? I had this little sign, um, free broom rides. I had that little sign for a long time. So I hung that. I did buy a couple things for this room. You're gonna see the big picture I have hanging over the fireplace. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I did buy some pictures. These are just old black and white pictures. They're people I don't know, but I thought they were spooky enough to look like they belong in a witch's lair. So uh, they were a dollar a piece and I brought them home and I just put them in my frames and set them up here. And I think they are perfect. <laughs> and my witch's hat, and that was all I did to this space right here. This little corner alongside the fireplace got a dining room chair and a table, a witch, a little lamp, and more of those spooky pictures. Don't they look great in my haunted witch's lair? You really get the feeling that it's somewhere a witch lives when you see all these poison bottles on the fireplace mantle. There's also a lot of candlesticks, some spider webs, a really spooky vase with some twigs in it, and above the mantle is a picture of someone that we are going to introduce to you a little later on in the video. He's the spookiest of all. far corner of the dining room got two large tree branches, lots of spider webs, and a little bit of white lights to brighten it up. I couldn't resist hanging my corn husk wreaths 
with some spider web ribbon and then I put some black orbs inside the cabinet to accompany my white dishes. Okay, and on the top of the table, which I'm trying to make look like a desk, I did a couple different things. I put a couple of my cloches. I just have some white china in those and my white uh, pumpkin that I actually got at Target last year. More of these creepy pictures. I mean, just look at these people. They're creepy. <laughs> they, they look perfect for a Halloween thing. They were a dollar a piece. So, you know, you don't always have to go to like, you know, Walmart or the big box stores to get your Halloween things. Go to a thrift store or an antique store and buy some creepy old pictures of people you don't know. It really fits in. And then on this side, I just put a black, this is actually a shawl of mine. So I put that there and I put some of my candlesticks. I have black metal candlesticks, put them on there and then some white candles. And I have a bunch of books here. This one is super old. Doesn't that look like a spell book? But this is actually my son's pharmacology book. It's very old and it was a gift to him when he graduated from pharmacology school. So today it's a spell book. And then I have another one just laying open. The book is written in a different language and it just looks really cool laying open on this table. And then a couple more black books, one tan one, completes the look of creepiness on this desk. And this really great looking haunted house pillow completes the look. And I got this at TJ Maxx last year. Now we're ready for the second half of this video, which is my surprise to you. So when we were very young, after we would go Halloweening, my siblings and I would sit around and eating our candy probably and try to tell spooky stories. We would try to make up the scariest stories so we could scare each other. They probably weren't that scary at all. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to tell you a Halloween spooky story. Now this story is completely made up from my head. I did not take it from any book or anything. I just came up with a really nice explanation of the witch's lair, who this person is, who are these people in these creepy photos, and why is this all so spooky and abandoned. Sit back and enjoy my Halloween tale of the witch's lair. Long, long ago, in a village very far away, lived a young girl named Wanda. Wanda had a love of her life, and his name was Yakapoise. Yakapoise Crane. Yakapoise Crane was the older brother of Ichabod Crane, and many suspected that he was a warlock. Wanda's family did not approve of this relationship. Her mom, her dad, her twin brothers, her sister, none of them approved of Yakapoise. They all thought Yakapoise was a warlock. He had magical powers, and he put a spell on Wanda, and they lamented over it. They wanted Yakapoise out of Wanda's life forever. Yakapoise was a scientist. He actually worked in a laboratory. And according to witnesses, one night, Yakapoise's laboratory was glowing. There were bright flashing lights. There were loud, thunderous sounds coming from that laboratory. What was going on there? Yakapoise left the laboratory very late that night and was never seen again. 
His family was spellbound. What happened to Yakapoys? Wanda's family was happy. They finally were rid of Yakapoys and the relationship was over. Wanda was free of him. But Wanda loved him. She didn't want to be free of him. Then the villagers blamed Wanda. They said she was a witch. Can I be a witch? Wanda thought. Am I a witch? Even Wanda's family thought she might be a witch. Little by little, Wanda started to believe them. And she missed Yakapoys so much, she thought, I'm going to learn how to be a witch. I'm going to study spells and potions and poisons. And I'm going to learn how to be a witch. And I'm going to bring Yakapoys back to me. So she bought the spell books and she filled her den with all the things that witches should have. And she learned about spells, and she learned about potions, and she learned about poisons. And one by one, her family disappeared. And then Wanda was all alone. And she would sit in her den with her books about poisons and potions and spells and she would hope that one day she could use all of her knowledge from all of these books to bring Yakapoys back. Oh my dear Yakapoys, I miss you so much. <laughs>